Welcome to Patty's Aquatics. Now, in today's video, we're going to be going outside. It's that time of year, unfortunately, where we got to start to take down the summer tubs. It's getting to be a little chilly at night. My lows at night are be high 40s to low 50s, starting to get that point where I need to start bringing those guppies and endlers inside. Now, unfortunately, I love those things out there, but I am excited to see what I have for fish in those tubs. So with that being said, let's head outside and I'll show you what's going on. Well, these are my summer tubs. I think they've grown in very well over the last few months. Um, it's been a very cool experience. Uh, the daylilies grew very nice, although I did plant them a little late, so they never flowered except for the one. But all the plants really grew in, especially the uh, Ludwigia and Dorsage and even the pond lilies. Now, I only got one flower out of them, but I think that more had to do with how shallow these ponds were. But um, all in all, it was a very excellent experience, and I can't wait for next year's. I guess first things first to get going on these, I want to get some of this duckweed out of here so I can see what's going on. Now the main reason I put the duckweed in here this summer was to kind of help prevent some of the light from hitting the water to kind of cut down on that green water. I still suffered from green water quite a bit in the two lower tubs, but um, it, it did its job and it still looked really cool out there. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm going to take as much of this duckweed out of here as I can. So the next thing to do is I got to get these daylilies out of the ponds and then I'm also going to remove the bricks that they were sitting on to prop them up out of the water. Um, I have to say, like I said earlier, these things grew exceptionally well. Um, the top one is the only one that flowered because I did plant them a little later in the season, but the growth I had on them just proves to me that it was a success and that next year I definitely have some ideas for different things to try. Like I want to try possibly some wild flowers or some different plants but when we get closer to that I'll I'll figure it out but like I said these were a success I'm very happy with these daylilies the next thing to remove are the pond lilies I got to try to unwind them through all the plants that I have in here but I'll get them out into a separate container and um, I'll show you what they look like. They grew really well this year. I'm very happy with the growth that they did have considering that they were in such shallow water compared to my last pond. So as you can see here, I got all three of them out. They grew lots of lily pads, which is awesome. But next up is I wanna to try to get all the plants out of here. Um, and like I said, the plants grew awesome. Um, the dwarf sage here even grew immersed out of the water, which I found pretty cool. I never really thought that would happen. It doesn't happen in my tanks, but uh, the dwarf sage, like I said, grew awesome. I have so much Ludwigia in here too that grew great. The only thing that did not survive this summer that I noticed was my Pogo Stevin Salatus octopus. Now, I don't know the reason for that. I didn't have that much in there. It just probably didn't take off, but everything else just went nuts. So I got all the plants out and I got them here in this container now. Like I said, there is so much of it. Like I said, the dwarf sage really took off in this tank, which I'm very happy about. So I know for next year and this little wigia, I didn't plant any of that into the substrate. I floated it all and it kind of grew immersed a lot of it too as well, which I thought was really cool. And like I said, the plants, plant growth in these ponds this summer were awesome and uh, definitely I'm going to heavily stock plants again for next year. Well, now that I got the plants and the structure out of there, my next step is I want to take my net and kind of scoop around in the water in the tubs and see what I can get. Now, this first scoop got me quite a few little baby fry. Now, I have to say, I have been seeing a lot of fry swimming around at the surface of these tubs the last couple weeks. So I kind of imagined that there would be a lot of it. And um, let me tell you, there are. There are a lot. So... Just scooping with the net a little bit, this is the fish that I found. Now, it's going to be hard to see, obviously, with this green water, but and I got one shrimp I found, too. Only one shrimp survived, but a lot of snails and a lot of cool fish. So I siphoned out a little bit of water, but what I'm going to do is take a cup and just pour it through the net into a bucket to kind of bring the water level down to get better access at these fish and not miss any while I'm doing it. And then here I'm going to siphon this last tub <laughs> and try not to drink the water. Blech, I hate that. 
And as I'm scooping more out, I finally find a cool looking male endler. It's hard to see, but definitely cool. Well, I got the water level down to just above the gravel in all three of these tubs, and it's kind of hard to see, but there are fish swimming around in all of them. Um, more some than others, like this one, I've got probably at least 15 or 20, but then there's a little baby fry in every single one too. So basically what I did is I pushed all the gravel to one side, hand scooped it out, and then I poured the tubs in through a net to get them out. And this is what I got. Now again, very hard to see with the green water and the gunk, but there are a boatload of fish and fry in this, but I will get you a better look at them once I get them down in my fish room. So temporarily I'm going to put them in this tote. So I started to fill up the water for it. Um, I want to put them in a separate tote for at least a day or so just to kind of acclimate the temperature and just make sure that there's nothing else in there that I don't want into my tanks right away just to kind of keep an eye on them. I'm sure everything will be fine, but um, that's the plan. So got them in there. They finally got some nice clean, clear water. But uh, yeah, there are a lot of fish for those three three little tubs that I had outside. So like I said, I'm very excited and uh, I can't wait to show you what some of these actually look like. So I let the fish sit overnight in that tote just to kind of acclimate to the temperature down here. And I want to show you some of the fish that I've seen that actually kind of look really cool. So I had all the fish in the tote here. I moved it over closer to an air pump. But looking through here, I found some very interesting males and I put a couple in my uh, container here to show you guys. Now these are just two of about four or five males that I found that look like this. They are crossed definitely between the red dragon guppy because they have those colors but they are also some kind of endler colors to them as well and you can kind of tell with their finage a little bit. Now what I find interesting about this is that when I put these all out there back in, I think that was beginning of June, end of May, they were all 100% true to their strains. And in that amount of time, they were able to breed, have babies and grow this big. Um, so that just tells you how fast these fish can actually grow outside in these summer tubs. I find that very cool. So I will be putting these and a lot, probably most of those fish into this tank here, which is supposed to be my mix uh, Endler and Guppy tank, which I have a couple in there, but these are mostly all pure strains now, but I want this to become my little mix tank. So that's where I'm gonna put the majority of them. Um, I wanna put some in here. This is where I got some of the excess plants that I pulled out of those tubs. But I have a koi in here and this koi eats everything I put in there and it annoys me. So I'm trying to get rid of the koi. Um, and then I want to try to make this tub a big mix endler and guppy tank itself. So, but first I got to get rid of that koi, which I might be getting rid of today. So we'll have to see. I'm going to put these in that other tank over there. And then I'll show you what it looks like after I put them in. Well, here's one little container full. Just one scoop of a net in that tote. There's some pretty cool looking ones in here. A lot of baby fry too. So, all right, let's pour them in here. When that settles, I'll show you.
Well, that pretty much wraps up my summer tubbing season for 2023. Now, I can't keep my eyes off this tank. There are so many different cool variations of guppy, guppy and endlers that I keep seeing every time I look at the tank. Um, this is my second year of doing summer tubbing. I've never done the guppy and endlers outside until this year, and they are by far my favorites. To be able to have that much of a growth rate in those last three months from having pure strains out there mixed to have babies and then those babies had babies it's 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 insane and i love it so if you have never summer tub before and you've always wanted to do it this is the way to do it and i will do it again next year i plan on putting those three tubs out and then getting another 100 gallon rubbermaid tank uh, tub out there to have all four of them that's my plan for now things always change but i can't wait and i am excited so if this kind of content interests you, please consider hitting that subscribe button, like the video and all that good stuff. I would appreciate it and I appreciate the support and I appreciate you. So as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time here at Patty's Aquatics.